Hello and welcome to my F124 driver career mode here today for part 23 for the Canadian Grand Prix. We're starting 17th. This is the rest of the grid. Off the back of a fantastic qualifying session, it's time to see how our starting grid looks like for today's race. World champion Max Verstappen starts from pole position and the smooth operator Carlos Sainz completes the front row. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Norris, Russell, Leclerc, Hamilton, Fernando Alonso, Perez, Stroll, Albon, Gasly, Sonoda, Joe, Bottas, Ocon, Ricardo, Brown, Hulkenberg, Sargent, and Oscar Piastri. And now it's time to head down to the track. The formation lap gets underway then, and it's going to be interesting today to see how the dry conditions could affect the lifespan of the tyres. come back to the grid to line up for the start of the race each driver will be wanting to get the best start they possibly can and they'll be hoping to finish today's race on the podium failing that within the points This is it then, the five red lights come on ahead of the Canadian Grand Prix. And it's a sour and way we go, and we've lit up the retires like a Christmas tree. We have had the best of starts, but the second phase is good. As we look to send it down the inside into turn one, try and gain a few places on the open lap. As now we try and ferry the throttle around the outside of turn two. We've gained one place, I think, there. We're on the back of the Sauber now of Joe as we head through the first chicane and the first sector. We're going to send it now down the inside is Bottas. Down the inside, can we get the job done? Round the outside, it is job done. It is job done. We have the job done on Valtteri Bottas. Makes the road is Esteban Ocon in the Alpine. We've gained one place on this opening lap P16. This Bottas can have a look at us, but we're going to absolutely launch it into the hairpin. We've gained two places there. We're up into P14. And up the road next is, is Yuki Tsunoda, who we had a great battle with in Monaco. And we tried multiple times to get him at the hairpin, and eventually did in that race. So let's see if we can repeat it here today in Canada. We're going to look to try and go to the outside, try and get the exit, but we just can't. Now Sonoda places his car beautifully in the middle of the track and we can't get past him. We're going to have to wait for now. As now we head down to Monster Hairpin once again on lap two. We're a little bit too far back now for the dive bomb. So we're going to try and set it up. Coming out to the hairpin and down into the final chicane and I think we've got quite a good launch off of the hairpin. We're getting closer and closer to the back of that RP and the back of Joe Salva. We're going to go to the inside and get both of them. Joe tries to keep his foot in, he can't. And that's two places in one corner. Is John going to have his back now as he looks to try and get at the inside but he hasn't quite got the straight line speed. To have us back. And now P12, unfortunately, we kind of got stuck. We didn't really have the pace on these medium tyres. And Joe, on lap six, has got us back into the final chicane. Can we get him back now down into turn one? I think he may disappear if we don't get him back like our teammate Albon does. He's miles up the road. There's he has got us now, we can get him into turn one. We're going to have to be patient and hope we can stick with him. This is Lewis Hamilton having a great 
race for once on the podium for once in a Ferrari but the Ferrari engine has given up and that's another Ferrari engine this season that has gone bang up and that's the fourth one three issues of Sauber and it's finally affected the works team Lewis Hamilton retires from the Canadian Grand Prix as we really overtake John into that final chicane as we go past the stricken Lewis Hamilton and now Yuki Tsunoda gets down the inside of of Joe and gets the job done on the Sauber as well we've been double teamed there but you may have seen there was a threat of rain and the rain on lap 12 has arrived it's only meant to be a small shower as you can see the rain on the camera there as we go through the the chicane struggle for traction there okay conditions are going to keep deteriorating for 10 minutes at least 10 minutes of rain but how heavy is, is it going to get we've seen in the past it can get very heavy here in here in Canada as we've been done by okay, off but we've been overtaken by Sonoda and now we've been overtaken again by Joe we're getting closer and closer to the back of Joe but I think it's now time for the intermediate so on lap 13 we are going to come into the pits and box for a set of the inters it rained of course at the end of last season's race and that was the wrong decision so hopefully that's not going to be a repeat and this time it is the right decision okay, go, go, go. That was a fantastic the ends go off the inters go on it with purple timed it is bang on the average pit stop 2.1 seconds it's a great stop and now hopefully we can use the pace of these tyres and the actual grip and hopefully we've timed the crossover point to perfection lap 15 now though and those did stay out an extra lap as now this is Piastri getting past Joe Piastri started down further back he's on hards and that's the job done for him there past Sauber as now everyone is in and both of the Salvers have followed each other in that's bad for Sauber but actually Bottas his race is ruined surely there as this is the McLaren of Oscar Piastri putting the Inters on but where do we come out have we gained the time that I hoped we had as we watched Piastri and his McLaren trundle down the pit lane we are through you can see there but we've got to go through the first couple of corners but there we are we've just gone through the picture we've beat out Piastri and we've gained one single place then and you can see how bad the rain got this small shower has turned biblical as now we were just keeping Piastri out of jabbing distance but now Piastri round the outside he's got the better car he's got the better grip and he's passed us as we run wide and Joe has nearly followed him through but we managed to get the exit just to keep him behind on lap 21 we are skating this game is very hard in the rain because now lap 22 we were just keeping Joe behind the Ashton disappeared the Ashton. and now we were just doing our own thing trying to keep Joe behind that kind of what is what our race turned into you can see how wet the track is not quite full wet it's not nowhere near that level of water as now this is Esteban Ocon at the back of the big train behind us into the hairpin lights up the rear tyre and spins round and he's blocking the track off at the hairpin everyone's queued up the horse is driving over the grass the Sauber's stopped and okay, that's pulled out flag, a red, red flag, flag. No overtaking, and let's get back into the, pits, please. the red flag is out it's the been race track, has been reset for car right now. Just, just because of Ocon spinning and AI can't be brought out to turn the steering wheel and you can see the confusion at the hairpin 
as there goes Olkenberg driving over the grass. Not sure that's where you really want to be when it's raining, but this is Daniel Ricardo's point of view, and Ricardo's had the biggest win there because he's just gone clean around the outside of everyone. Ricardo had the right idea, right at the back of that pack, now in front of it. Not bad. But the rain is stopping, it still enters and there's not that many laps to go so with the race reset we could potentially get a point again as the lights go out and we're racing for the second time here in Canada and we've got a much better start than we did in the original start and we're sending it down the inside and gained quite a few positions there we're going to look to try and get round the outside of the Aston Martin we were in a championship fighting the constructors with Aston Martin early on when we got ahead of our teammate Alex Albon was gained a few positions on this open lap at the restart we're going to absolutely launch it now down inside the half down inside the Aston and we've got the Red Bull off Sergio Perez and we've really pushed off and onto the grass there and we're up into P7 after spending pretty much this entire race trundling around in a trolley train in P12 up front night Max leading once again after the disappointment of Monaco and it's more disappointment in Canada that Honda wrench in the back of the Red Bull has given up Max has happened retired from the Canadian Grand Prix as Sergio Perez the other Red Bull overtakes us for P7 and for P6 we're down into P7 as now Albon is looking to get us back Albon disappeared up the road we try and hold Alex off but he is through just we're going to have to tuck back in his slipstream can we get him back ultimately it is the same points and Albon's been the quickest driver this weekend and now we're going to be left defending Lance Stroll who won this race last season he won his first race at his home Grand Prix as we go on now to the final lap of what's been a dramatic Canadian Grand Prix lap 35 now into the hairpin we go there's just two more corners to navigate we've got Stroll and Piastri behind as we head up we're punching a big hole in the air and now we're going to defend to the inside we're free wide we're going to be double teamed at the final corner but we've got the bravery to break later and stay ahead of both of them and after a dramatic last couple of laps we are going to come home for more points and p7 the wait is over lando norris takes the checkered flag What a true show of character to fight through the grid the way they did, to not get beat down by starting so far down and to come back and win it all just goes to show how strong this driver is. Our drivers are making their way out for the podium celebrations and it's going to be McLaren picking up the winner's trophy. Congratulations to the entire team for that fantastic performance. Lando is finally a race winner in Formula 1. Yes, there was some luck involved with Max's engine failure, but he's finally done it as Lando. McLaren had so many podiums last season and were never on the top step. Finally though, they've done it. Charles Leclerc last time out race winner in Monaco comes home for P2 and George Russell gets on the podium as well in P3. Carlos Sainz dropping down from the front row P2 to P4 and Fernando Alonso completes the top five. Albon then finishes P7 just in front of us. He was in the points 
pretty much the entire race we come home after a pretty after a tough race out of the points that late red flag resetting everything we come home for four points and p8 has been a great day for us as a team and then down at the back two retirements that being lewis hamilton who was on for his first podium as a ferrari driver and the championship leader Max Verstappen, Nico Hulkenberg, who was the last finisher of the day. So this is the damage that has been done in the Drivers World Championship then. The gap coming into this weekend was 27 points. The gap now is just two points. This is turning into a pretty good championship fight. Charles Leclerc is P3 and we've dropped now to P8 with 31 points. We're just two points behind George Russell and three points behind Sergio Perez and Albon is 12th. And then there's still a couple of drivers still yet to score this season. In terms of the constructors then and McLaren take over the lead of the constructors with that win today and the disappointment for Red Bull only picking up a handful of points after Max's DNF. The gap now in the constructors is 16 points between McLaren and Red Bull. We're still P5 ahead of Aston Martin and then there's still Sauber and Haas who are still yet to score this season. So that's been your Canadian Grand Prix. A bit of a slow burner. The rain tried it it's hardest to mix it up and then the red flag at the end of the race really mixed it up we go to spain next i'll see you then goodbye